When we read the scriptures, our forefathers always looked to the older men first. Then they went with the young men. But let's see what Rehoboam did. <coughs> Where you at? Verse 8. But he forsook the counsel of the old men which had given him and consulted with the young men that were grown up with him. What verse you at? Verse 8. Read it again. But he forsook the counsel of the old men which they had given him and consulted with the young men that were grown up with him. So he'd rather hear the counsel of the young men that grew up with him. Go ahead. And which stood before him. And he said unto them, What counsel give ye that we may answer this people <coughs> who have spoken to me, saying, Make the yoke which is thy father did put upon us lighter. And the young men that were grown up with him spake unto him, saying, Thus shalt thou speak unto this people that spake unto thee, saying, Thy father made our yoke heavy, but make thou it lighter unto us. Thus shalt thou say unto them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's loins. Y'all know what he's saying? My, my little finger will be thicker than my father's rod. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. And now whereas my father did lay you with a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father had chastised you with whips, I will chastise you with scorpions. Y'all hear the counsel a young man gave? These young, that's why, because young men have no experience. That's why a lot of young brothers get together. We just wait for you to destroy yourselves. Oh, let's go to this. You don't know what you're doing. You have no experience. You have a lot of your parakeets, you just quote what you hear brothers say. You have no experience yet. So when we try to give you the experience, just shut up, listen, and learn, and follow our lead. That's it. We don't want to hear what you think, because you your thoughts are butterflies. Come on. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day, as the king had appointed, saying, Come to me again the third day. And the king answered the people roughly, and forsook the old men's counsel that they gave him, and spake to them after the counsel of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, and I will add to your yoke. My father also chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. Wherefore the king hearkened not unto the people, for the cause was from the Lord, that he might perform his saying, which the Lord spake by Ahijah, the Shilonite, unto Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. So when all Israel saw that the king hearkened not unto them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in David? Neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, O Israel. To your tents, O Israel. So that was the proclamation. To your tents, O Israel. Read. Now see to thine own house, David. So Israel departed unto their tents. But as far as the children of Israel which dwelt in the cities of Judah, Rehoboam reigned over them. So this is where the split happened in the nation of Israel. Okay, you had ten tribes split from Judah and Benjamin. What happened, where, where was Levi right now? At this point, who can tell me where Levi was? Ramiah. Levi was scattered throughout all the lands through the priesthood. Right. The Levites as the priests were scattered throughout all the tribes. Okay. From there, let's go to 2 Chronicles 11, verse 5. Now this history, you brothers must learn this. Because if, as you see on the street, some people come up to you and, as I found calls them, some of them are upgrades. Like you see on Matrix when Neo was fighting, he said, oh, upgrades. Meaning there's some people that study a little more than others. You, some of y'all used to battling a dumb, ignorant Negro who don't know nothing. But there's a few out there that sit down, study, and read. And if you're not well, so all you know is the white man is the devil, you're going to get confounded. When I first started teaching, I remember I was on Wall Street, Esau came up saying, why, uh, why do you have Benjamin on the sign as West Indians? I said, because they are people. He said, well, they're homosexuals. The Benjamites are all homosexuals. So I was furious. And he had his Bible, I smacked it out of his hand. So then the camp leader came up, he said, what's going on? I said, he started saying Benjamites are, are, are homosexuals. So the Edomite says, well, did you read the book of Judges? So the camp leader said, you never read Judges? I said, nope. So when I read Judges, I was like, oh. So felt very fool. so that taught me a valuable lesson. All right. What did I say, God? Second Chronicles 11, verse 5. All right, let's start. Second Chronicles 11, verse 5. 
And Rehoboam dwelt in Jerusalem, and built cities for defense in Judah. He built even Bethlehem, and Etam, and Tekoa, and Bethzor, and Shekoh, and Adulam, and Gath, and Marashah, and Zip, and Odorat, and Adorayim, and Lachish, and Azke, Azekah, and Zorah, and Ayajalon and Hebron, which are in Judah and in Benjamin, fenced cities. And he fortified the strongholds and put captains in them, and store of victuals of oil and wine. And in every several city he put shields and spears and made them exceeding strong. And those shields are literal shields. They're not six-pointed hexagrams. <laughs> you the dumb Israelites, oh, see shields, those are hexagrams, that ain't hexagrams. <laughs> literal shields, he put weapons in there, right? Having Judah and Benjamin on his side. So, Jer Rehoboam at this time had Judah and Benjamin on his side, go ahead. And the priests and the Levites that were in all Israel res resorted to him out of all their coasts. So now we're going to find out about the Levites, go ahead. For the Levites left their suburbs and their possessions and came to Judah and Jerusalem for Jeroboam and his sons had cast them off from executing the priest's office unto the Lord. Y'all see what Jeroboam did? They told all the Levites, get out of our suburbs. All you Levites, get the hell out. Who can tell me why? The reason was is that the priests would command them to go up to Jerusalem on no. our holy days, and they didn't want to go back out of pride because of the ark. That's the reason. If the Levites had stayed amongst the northern kingdom, when the high holy days came, remember, there were, there were especially three law, three commandments where all Israel had to go up to Judah in Jerusalem to worship. Jeroboam, thinking ahead, he said, no, I don't want that thing. It's going to say as we read down. What verse you at? 50. Start at 14. For the Levites left their suburbs and their possessions and came to Judah and Jerusalem. For Jeroboam and his sons had cast them off from executing the priest's office unto the Lord. Let's see what he did. Okay? And he ordained him priests for the high places, and for devils, and for calves which he had made. And after them, out of all the tribes of Israel, such as set their hearts to seek the Lord God of Israel, came to Jerusalem. So now out of all the tribes of Israel, that's, that's what I'm saying. There were remnants, small remnants of the other tribes that did go with Judah. Read this verse again. And after them, out of all the tribes of Israel, such as set their hearts to seek the God of Israel, came to Jerusalem to sacrifice unto the Lord God of their fathers. Go ahead. So they strengthened the kingdom of Judah and made Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, strong three years. For three years they walked in the way of David and Solomon. So now, from there, let's go to 2 Kings chapter 17. So now, this is where the split in Israel happened. Y'all must know this history. 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 1. Verse 1. In the top year of Ahaz, king of Judah, began Hosea, the son of Elah, to reign in Samaria over Israel nine years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, but not as the king of Israel's that were before him. Against him came up Shalmaneser, king of Assyria. Who can tell me about Samaria right there? Samaria, that was the capital for Levi. For Ephraim. Right, that was the capital of Ephraim. Okay. We don't? What verse you at? Verse 4. Uh, 3. 3. And against him came up Shalmaneser, king of Assyria. And Hosea became his servant and gave him presents. And the king of Assyria found conspiracy in Hosea. For he had sent messengers to the so king of Egypt and brought no presents to the king of Assyria as he had done year by year. Therefore the king of Assyria shut him up and bound him in prison. Now these names you gotta familiarize yourself with. You see it says Shalmaneser, king of Assyria. This is the king that's mentioned in the Apocrypha, which we're about to read in a few minutes. Go ahead. And the king of Assyria came up throughout all the land and went up to Samaria and besieged it three years. So the Samaria where Ephraim dwelt was besieged for three years, come on. In the ninth year of Hosea, the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried Israel away into Assyria. So notice it says he carried Israel away into Samaria. Okay? I mean into Assyria. Excuse me. Who can tell me how? There are artifacts 
I forgot to bring them today. There's artifacts that show the Assyrians leading Ephraim and um, into captivity. Who can tell me what the Assyrians did? How did they bring them? Uh, Isaac. Um, there's certain pictures that, that show how he put hooks on the lips of the Israelites and dragged them into captivity. Exactly. I don't know if anybody ever pulled your lip. It's like a horse's bridle. You grab that lip, that person, gonna, his head going to go wherever you guide it. Because you don't want that lip to rip off. So these guys had hooks in their lip and just pulled it. They wasn't resistant. That thing getting your lip, you're going to go wherever that thing is being pulled. Yeah. In the ninth year of Hosea, the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried Israel away into Assyria and placed them in Halal and the harbor, in, in the harbor by the river of Gozan and in the cities of the Mede. Bezalel, can you give me a map? Give me a map of uh, Middle East. And I want to see Assyria, I want to see Israel, and I want to see Assyria. Okay, good. All right, you see the land of Israel left. Under it, you see Samaria, and under it, you see Jerusalem. So they were carried from there on up to the top right where it says Assyria. And you see Nineveh under the word Assyria. That's where the prophet Jonah was. When you read about the history of Jonah, that's when you read about Tobit and the Apocrypha. They were carried there. Okay. Thank, thank you. What verse you at, Asa? Uh, verse 7. All right. For so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God, which had brought them up out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of the power of the king of Egypt, and had feared other gods, and walked in the statues of the heathen, whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel and of the kings of Israel, which they had made. And the children of Israel did secretly those things that were not right. That's why the elder brought out the brothers out of town was doing secret stuff. And the children of Israel did secretly those things that were not right against the Lord, their God. And they built them high places in all their cities, from the Tower of Watchmen to the Fence City. And they set them up images and groves in every high hill. When it says images and groves in every high hill, because you read that a lot in the Bible, who can explain that to me? Images and groves on every high hill. What they would do is they would take a tree, a stump about this high, and they would hollow it out and carve their idols into the tree. And usually in a garden where they would commit their, their, their so-called religious rites and offer up babies and food and all that. Right. They, that's why it's set upon every hill. Because on the hills there were trees often, and they would, like he said, they would carve it out, there would be a stump, and it would carve the image of their god. And that's where they went up and lit, lit incense and did church, what they called church service. <laughs> what verse you at? Verse 10. Verse 10. And they set them up images and groves in every high hill and under every green tree. And there they burnt incense in all the high places, as did the heathen whom the Lord carried away before them, and wrought wicked things to provoke the Lord to anger. For they served idols, whereof the Lord had said unto them, Ye shall not do this thing. Yet the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah by all the prophets and by all the sayers, saying, Turn ye from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the law which I command your fathers and which I sent you by my servants the prophets. Notwithstanding, they would not hear. But harden their necks. Just like today, when we ain't camp teaching, our people harden their necks. Go ahead. Like to the neck of their fathers that did not believe in the Lord their God. What does it mean they harden their neck? Who can explain that 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 parable? Harden their neck. Uh Ezekiel. Stiff and stuff in their own way. They do their ways Give me the illustration of a hard neck or a stiff neck. If your neck is hard and stiff, you can't move. Right, you cannot turn to the left and you can't turn to the right. It's stiff. It's that one way. You ain't, you ain't moving. So that's what God is calling them: hard head, hard neck, stiff neck. Go ahead. And they rejected his statutes and his covenant that he made with their fathers and his testimony which he testified against them, and they followed vanity and became vain and went after the heathen that were round about them, concerning whom the Lord had charged them that they should not do like them. 
And they left all the commandments of the Lord their God and made them molten images, even two calves, and made a grove and worship all the hosts of heaven and serve Baal. Serve Baal, the devil, go ahead. And they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire and use divinations and enchantments and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord. Read, read that one again. And they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire and to use divination and enchantment. Santaria, brujaria. That's what was going on. This is what, remember he's, who he's talking about, Israel. Mm -hmm. Starting with Ephraim, the so-called Puerto Rican. Y'all get mad if you want, but we're going to talk about it today. <laughs> Go ahead. And they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire and use divinations and enchantments and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. Therefore the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. There was none left but the tribe of Judah only. Also Judah kept not the commandments of the Lord their God, but walked in the statutes of Israel which they made. And the Lord rejected all the seed of Israel and afflicted, and afflicted them and delivered them into the hand of the spoilers until he had cast them out of his sight. Now did the Lord allow the Assyrians to uh, conquer Judah? No. What happened? Leon. Um, the, the, the most I sent the angels to defend Judah and he turned them. Right, because it tells you later on that Judah had repented, and when Assyria came against Judah, the Lord sent an angel and tore the Assyrians up, whooped them, blinded them. Okay? Go ahead, what verse you at? Verse 21. For he wrecked Israel from the house of David, and they made Jeroboam the son of Nebat king, and Jeroboam would drave Israel from following the Lord and made them sin a great sin. So who can tell me what Jeroboam did? We read it already. I'm seeing him staying with the class. First he drove the Levites out. Right. First thing he got rid of all the Levites. Right. So they were going to keep the high holy days and worship the most high. Exactly. Then he went ahead and started with the groves and stuff. He started doing the idols and trees and all that stuff. Now, did we read about who we set up as priests? No, no, we didn't get there. Oh, okay. All right. Very good, Apari. Very good. Very good. Go ahead. Back to verse 22. You. For the children of Israel walked in all the sins of Jeroboam, which he did. They departed not from them, until the Lord removed Israel out of his sight. As he had said by all his servants, the prophets, so was Israel carried away out of their own land, to Assyria unto this day. And the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon. Notice what the king of Assyria did. He brought men from Babylon, go ahead. And from Kutha. Kutha. And from Abba. Uh -huh. And from Hamath. And some Sephardim. And placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. And they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. So you had heathen. You had. Hamites dwelling in Samaria. Everybody understand that? Yes. Okay, from there. Uh, do I want to read down? They were missing. Keep reading that. And so it was and so it was the beginning of their dwelling there that they feared not the Lord. Therefore the Lord sent lions among them which slew some of them. Wherefore they spake to the king of Assyria, saying, the nations which thou have removed and placed in the cities of Samaria know not the manner of God of the land, of the, of the God of the land. Therefore he has set lions among them, and behold, they slay them because they know not the manner of the God of the land. Then the king of Assyria commanded, saying, Carry thither one of the priests from whom he brought from thence, and let them go and dwell there, and let him teach them the matter of the God of the land. So now, I want to, my question is, who was the priest? Because we just read that the Le what happened to the Levites? They got cast out. So who was the priest? Give me the scripture. I want the scripture. 1 Kings 12, verse 25. Then Jeroboam built Shechem in the Mount Ephraim and dwelt therein and went out from thence and built Penuel. And Jeroboam said in his heart, Now shall the kingdom return to the house of David. If this people go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then shall the heart of this people turn again unto their Lord, unto Rehoboam king of Judah. 
and they shall kill me and go again to Rehoboam, the king of Judah. See what? See how he's thinking? That's why he got rid of the Levites. Go ahead. Whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold and said unto them, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold, thy God, O Israel. Yeah, Jerusalem's too far. <laughs> Listen, Israel, it's too far. It's too much for you to go way up there. Well, you can serve God right here. Go ahead. Behold, thy God, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And he set the one in Bethel, and the other he put in Dan. And this thing became a sin for the people went to worship before the one even unto death. Here it come. And he made a house of high places and made priests of the lowest of the people, which were not of the sons of Levi. See what he did? He found the lowest of Israel, the bum, the uneducated, the illiterate, and said, you can be a priest. And you can go around talking about, I see Moses walking on the water. That's what you got, the lowest of the people. That said, these are your hey, gods. We see that today. Yeah. Where exactly. rejects leave here and brothers set them up. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay. Yep. Now go back to 2 Kings where you were at. Was that where you were at originally, 2 Kings? 2 Kings 17. I want y'all, I want to go back to the park where it said the lions was eating them up. And he said, bring one of the priests. Mm -hmm. Verse 24. And the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon, and from Kutha, and from Abba, and from Hamad, and from Sepharim, and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. And they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. And so it was at the beginning of their dwelling there that they feared not the Lord, Therefore the Lord sent lions among them, which slew them of them, slew some of them. Wherefore they spake to the king of Assyria, saying, The nations which thou hast removed and placed in the cities of Samaria know not the manner of the God of the land. Therefore he hath sent lions among them, and behold, they slay them because they know not the manner of the God of the land. Then the king of Assyria commanded, saying, Carry thither one of the priests whom ye brought from them. So who did they go get? The lowest of the people. They went and got one of the lowest of the people. Go ahead. And let them go and dwell there and let him teach them the manner of the God of the land. Then one of the priests whom they carried away from Samaria came and dwelt in Bethel and taught them how they should fear the Lord. So now, from there, let's go to, bear with me a second, bear with me a second, Isaiah 7 and 9. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 9 And the head of Ephraim is Samaria So I want y'all to highlight that The head of Ephraim is Samaria Okay So now From there go to Ezekiel 37 Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 16 Where will thou son of man Take thee one stick and write upon it For Judah And for the children of Israel his companions So who were the companions of the children of Israel That was with Judah Leon. Um, that's, that's Benjamin and Levi. Right, read on. Then take another stick and write upon it. Joseph, the stick of Ephraim. And for all the house of Israel, his companions. Who were the companions with Ephraim? Leon. Um, the ten tribes. The ten tribes of Israel. Right. Those are the other nine. Okay. So, from there, I want y'all to remember that. Okay. From there, let's go to 1 Maccabees 10, verse 38. Write this one down. Make sure you highlight this. 1 Maccabees 10, verse 38. Right, pay close attention to this precept. And concerning the three governments... This is during the Greek captivity. When the Maccabees were fighting the Greeks. The Greeks were trying to make a, a quasi-alliance with the Maccabees. Okay. And concerning the three governments that are added to Judea from the country of Samaria, let them be joined with Judea, that they may be reckoned unto, reckoned to be under one, nor bound to obey other authority than the high priest. So now, who can tell me what happened? The three governments that were in Samaria was given to Judah. What happened? Jeremiah. Mike. 
Judah had kicked all the other nations out. Right. Judah got all the nations that we just read about in Kings out. Okay? They were out of the land. So you need to know that because when we get to the New Testament, some of you are going to be confused. So I'm taking it slow. From there, let's go. Um, where do I want to go? Let's go to Matthew 10. Matthew chapter 10, verse 5. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, and to ye not. Mm. So Christ said, Go not in the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. Hmm, now there's a problem right there. Because when we get to John 4, go to John 4 and 1. Hmm. I want y'all to pay close attention. I'm about to ask you a question. John chapter 4, verse 1. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard and baptized her. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John. So Jesus himself baptized not with his disciples. So Christ didn't baptize nobody. Get that through your head. He never dipped nobody in water. His disciples did. That's why it says, though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples were doing it. Why? Where did they get it from? Baptism. Where did they get it from? Water baptism. Only two. Zephaniah. John the Baptist. John the Baptist. Why didn't Christ baptize anybody in water? Leon. Because that wasn't that wasn't his um his his custom. Meaning that wasn't that was that was John's uh, time that was gonna be Christ's time. Mean, he's, he's not gonna do the thing John did, he's above John. Right. Okay, it was temporary. Baptism in water was temporary. Many of y'all today bugged out of your mind, ah, I need some water, oh take a bath. <laughs> <laughs> We get a lot of questions on that. Right. And I usually take them to the third verse, what John says out of, I mean the third chapter, what John says out of his own mouth, chapter 3, verse 30. He must increase, but I must decrease. Meaning what I was doing is finished. There's a new order for you to follow. I was dipping people in water, now Christ is going to come and speak the word. That's why he says, now you are clean through the words which I have spoken unto you. Right. Okay, but people still asking us, can I come to you guys and get baptized? Right, and be wicked as hell. Right. Be wicked as hell. A, a wet homosexual. Right. <laughs> because the scripture says when the people came to John, they confessed their sins. Exactly. They was confessing everything they did wrong to the Lord, and they got baptized. You, ain't nobody doing that today. Y'all ain't confessing right. nothing. And, and that's how evil it is. You're begging us to dip you in water, but you don't want to hear the commandments. Makes exactly. no sense. Ezekiel. Right. Exactly. Now, back to John 4. John chapter 4, verse 2. Though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left you there and departed again into Galilee. And he must needs go through Samaria. Now I want you to pause right there. He must needs go through Samaria. Remember what he already told the disciples. Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. Let's you know. Then cometh ye to the city of Samaria, which is in Sychar. So now, what I want you to pay close attention to, there's two trains of thought out here in the world. Some people say that the woman of Samaria here in John 4 is descended of 2 Kings 17 verse 24, the Hamites when the Babylonians and the uh, Africans support the land. The second train of thought is that she's an Israelite. That's why I took y'all to that bridge with 1 Maccabees 10 verse 38 about the three governments given to Judah. Now we're gonna see what is this woman's nationality, right? Then cometh he to the city of Samaria, which is called Sakar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being weary with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. Then cometh the woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. So you got a woman of Samaria. Christ speaks to her now. Woman, give me to drink. Go ahead. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, 
How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which I'm a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Stop. Who can explain? Who can explain? I need some new hands. Zephaniah. It goes back to the split. Did y'all forget what we read earlier about Israel was split into two kingdoms? When you go home tonight, read the rest of the history. It tells you that they were going to make war against each other. Israel hated each other. The two kingdoms, Judah and Ephraim. Judah and Israel. The Most High had to send a prophet to stop the fight. It was about to get down. So now, read verse 9 again. And said the woman of Samaria to him, How is it that thou being a Jew hast to drink of me, which I'm a woman of Samaria? Jew is short for what? Who can help me? Steve, you know that one, right? Jew is short for Jesus. Jew is short for Judah. Thank you. Go ahead. Jesus answered and said unto her, you in verse 9? Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou being a Jew, ask a drink of me, which I'm a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaria. Come on. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldst have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. So, hmm, let's pause there. Living water is the correct. So what is Christ saying to this woman? What is he saying to her? He says, if thou knowest the gift of God, meaning uh, the gift of God is, is the Lord, Christ. And who is it that say to thee, give me to drink? Thou would have asked of him, and he would give you give, give, give living water. So Christ is saying, if you know who I am and follow behind me, you get the understanding. So what do you think she is? You think she's another nation? No, no because uh, in verse 12. No, we didn't get to verse 12. Just deal one verse at a time. That's why I said, look at verse 9. What does verse 9 tell you about her? Give me Yashu. She's basically saying, that she knows the king. She's acknowledging that she's the king of David because she knows that they don't deal with each other. Something else. I'm getting Mike to Bezalel. Something Christ says to her. Look at what Christ says to the woman. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Ten. <laughs> Y'all getting me so rattled? Verse 10. Thank you. He's offering her the commandments and the understanding in the scripture shows that she's not a Hamite. Right. He's offering her more than just eternal life. Yes. He says, if you knew who I was, all you had to do was ask and I'll give it to you. That tells you right off the bat, she's not another nation. Let's read on. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah hold on, brother Nathaniel. Christ also tells him the gift of God. What is the gift of God? Is his law, statutes, and commandments. Showing you she's not from another nation. And for him to say, if you knew who I was, that means that the people were anticipating his return. So she had to be reading something to say, wow. This is who we've been reading about. This is who we've been waiting on. Mm -hmm. See, Christians read, so-called Christians read this and say, oh, see, he's dealing with everybody because of the dumb church. That's what's wrong with it. They'll read this and say, oh, see, he's dealing, he's, he's going to give this, give the other nations the eternal life. They're crazy as hell. Read on. Giving the living water. The woman said unto him, sir, thou hast nothing. Wait a minute. Give me John 7. With that living water. Look at this one. John 7 is 38. We're going to blast this one today. You got it? Yeah. St. John chapter 7, verse 38. He that believeth on me, as the scripture have said, out of his out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. The belly there, what is the synonym? The belly, what is the synonymous for? The belly. Some of y'all think he's vomiting something up. What is the belly synonymous for? I'm off. Uh, the belly in that um, context is talking about the mind. Right, the belly is your mind. That's who's making reference. If you believe on Christ as the scripture says, out of your mind shall flow rivers of living water, meaning true and proper understanding shall come from your mind. Okay, go back to John 4. John chapter 4, verse 11. The woman said unto him, Sir, there is nothing to draw, and the well is deep. 
From whence then has thou that living one? Watch this. Art thou greater than our father Jacob? Wait, read that again. Art thou greater than our father Jacob? Art thou greater than our father Jacob? Which gave us the wealth and drank thereof himself? and his children and his cattle. So what is this woman? Now that's a clearer verse. Yep. This is the one you can go to quick on the street to smash an idiot. So what is that verse telling us? Let's go to Steve. What do you get out of verse 12? What is she telling you about herself? She's letting you know that she's um, um, of Israel by uh, saying, um, giving the reference of our father Jacob. Right, very good. You, got, you hit it right on the head. She's telling you she's an Israelite right there. Are you greater than our father, Jacob? <laughs> yes, sir. So ain't no, ain't no guesswork about what she is. Verse 12. Art thou greater than our father, Jacob, which gave us the wealth, and drank thereof himself, and his cattle, and his children? Art thou greater than our father, Jacob, which gave us the wealth, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her. Now let's see if Jesus says, you a liar, you a Hamite, from one of them uh, African countries. <laughs> let's see if he says that. Jesus answered and said unto her, whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. So, ooh, maybe she got one over on Christ. Because when you hear some of these other Israelite camps who are crazy as hell, they say, no, she lied to Christ. <laughs> and he just, she, she just lied to him and he didn't pick up on it. Are you kidding me? She dazzled him. She dazzled him. You got to be insane. Right. What verse you had in itself? Verse 13. Go ahead. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drink of this water shall thirst again. So if you drink from the water in this well, you shall thirst again. Go ahead. For whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. No. But the word of the but the water that I give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. So what is he offering this woman again? What is he saying to her, Ezekiel? He's giving her, he's offering her the, he's offering her the commandments. Right, eternal life again. This is another clue that she's not of another nation. Read. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus said unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. Notice what Christ said, call your husband. You know why that's important? A lot of you brothers love talking to women. There's an order. If she's married, call the husband. Some of your lips stuck out just now. Don't talk to the husband. And some of the women get offended when we tell them we need to speak to your husband. Exactly. Okay, and they don't realize that there's a divine order put in place while we need to speak to your husband with respect. And it's according to the commandments. Exactly. Read that again. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus said unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said I have no husband. But thou hast had five husbands. And he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. And that saidest thou true. So Christ was testing her. Christ was testing the woman. She came honestly though. So he said, you told me the truth there. So you mean he couldn't spot right. above when she said, our father Jacob? He couldn't spot that one, but he caught this thing. He couldn't tell she was a Hamite, but he knew her personal business. Right, right. Her personal private life, he spot that. Exactly. Read that again. Uh, the, woman, the woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not me to come into the draw. Jesus said unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. And that saidest thou true. How come this guy that she now had was not her husband? A party. Oh. They didn't have an instrument of marriage. There's no instrument of marriage. What else? Right, she was a jump off. There was no, they were not together like the Lord tells you the husband is supposed to take the wife to live with him. There's supposed to be an instrument of covenants according to Tobit. None of that was there. It was just wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Oh, that was good. Yeah. Jesus said to her, uh, verse 19. The, the woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. So wait a minute, she had five husbands. This woman was busy. 
So she was, she had five dudes that were real husbands to her. She lived with them, had an instrument of covenant, one after the other. She went through five. But that last one, Christ said, that guy you got now, mm -mm, he's not your husband. That's what a lot of sisters say, oh, this is my husband. Oh, oh yeah, sister, you got an instrument of covenant? And meaning, what I mean? Did y'all get married? And she goes, no, we don't need that. Give me that I want you to stay with me now. John 4, and about the, uh, you have had five. <coughs> Back to that so we don't lose the train John of thought. John chapter 4, verse 17. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. And that saidest thou truth. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. So she said, I perceive that you are a prophet. Okay. Our fathers worship in this mountain. Stop. Mm -mm. Our fathers worship in this mountain. That goes right back to the time of Moses with the blessings and the curses. When you're reading, it says Judah and his companions was on one mountain and Ephraim and the other tribes on another mountain. Okay, go ahead. The, the woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worship in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Right. Why does, what does she mean? Ye say that Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. I keep seeing the same hands. Robert. Elio. 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 Because that's how it was first set up. It was first set up for us to do all of that in our Jews. Who set that up? Uh, the Most High. Right, the Most High set that up. Now, why was she, send back up, why was she worshiping in this mountain? We read it earlier today, just think. Because, see, I don't want to say because of, because of You want to say that means you're not sure, I've seen. Oh, 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 look, that's the right hand. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because that's the um, reason uh, Jerry Boot set up them items up on Mount uh, Samaria. Very good, very good. I've seen who's going to pick that up. Very good. One with another. If you don't know the history, you read this and go, I don't know what you're talking about. Verse 20 again. Our fathers worship in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe. The hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor, nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Why? What do you mean by that? What that mean? What that mean? What that mean? <laughs> Isaac. Um, Christ was referring to the destruction that was coming of the Titus and the Spatius. Right. And when? In uh, 70 AD. Right. 70 AD. Titus and Vespasian. Okay. Roman generals destroyed, sacked Jerusalem. They destroyed the whole land. Took it over. Made people slaves that were still there. Read it again. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Okay. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. So now, what do you mean by that? Because brothers use verse 22 <laughs> to say that she was not Israel. Okay, but look at verse 21 again. Read 21 again. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain, Me meaning Samaria, nor the northern yet, kingdom, go ahead, nor yet at Jerusalem, Judah, Benjamin and Levi, worship the Father. None of y'all, none of us going to worship the Father. Go ahead. He worship, he know not what. But let me tell you this. You don't know what you're worshiping. Go ahead. We know what we worship. We who? Who's the we? Tony, who's the we? Christ said, we know what we worship. We, we, we who? We that he's talking about is the son of Judah. Right, Judah. We Jews of the kingdom of Judah know what we worship. Right? For salvation is of the Jews. What's that mean? For salvation is of the Jews. Does that mean salvation is only for the kingdom of Judah and to hell with the northern kingdom? Levi. Because Christ come out of the Jews. We know that already. Explain the verse now. Um, saying, you're the moving on, but I want you to say it easy. Because the Jews was going to be the one who was going to teach the other, uh, the other tribes. 
<laughs> Deal with your first answer. Stick there. All right, um, your first answer was it was good, but I want you to elaborate more. Because Christ came out of the out of the tribe of Judah. So, so since Christ is the one who was gonna be, was the one who was gonna bring back the two nations together, so he was the one who was gonna redeem them out of. Out okay, of okay, okay. You see, you gotta just add a little more to it. That was good. That was good. For salvation is of the Jews. The scriptures tell you that the Messiah would come out of Judah. That's what he was telling her. You know the kingdom, you got to come to Christ of Judah. That hatred that's between the tribes must end. That's what he's telling her. Salvation is of the Jews, sister. All that little hatred y'all got for us, you better put it down. Yes. I have a question. Um, when Christ said uh, salvation is of the Jews, does that, uh, or could you use that for Zechariah 12 and 7, saying that uh, the Most High would extend salvation first to Southern Kingdom, and then from Southern Kingdom, they would bring it to Northern Kingdom? Hey, you could use that. That's a good reason. You can use that. You're thinking. Um, the elders said that all that hatred, y'all got to get rid of it. But it's prophesied that the repenting Israelites are going to get rid of it. Y'all remember where that is? The hatred between the, the Ephraim and Judah. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? It's Ephraim. Uh, right. I got it here. I'm going to read it. Isaiah 11 13. The enemy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. So, some of you may still have in your heart, y'all want to keep that animosity. That's why he always chose. So what, Judah Rocky? There's some of you who are going to get over it. And y'all going to become reverent. Y'all going to become unified. Y'all going to become as one. That's what the prophecy says. Exactly. For the brothers who's having a hard time. And then you're going to have those dumb Israelites that keep rejecting Ephraim. You're going to have repenting Israelites that say, yes, these are our brothers. Like we're doing now. You notice there's a lot of Israelite cats that want nothing to do with Ephraim. They won't even teach about Ephraim. Right. Okay? I don't, don't know how. They, they don't know how. So you're in a place now watching prophecy unfold. Let's go back to John 4. John chapter 4, verse 22. 22. You worship, you know not what. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. Come on. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. Now that's when you would go to the one you pulled, Imar and Zechariah. Because Christ was the one dealing with Judah and then he went to Ephraim. He laid, the, he laid the foundation of what to do. But remember what he told the disciples in Matthew 10, 5 and 6. Read Matthew 10, 5 and 6, and I'm going to ask you why. Now, we already got the answer. You can see what's thinking. Matthew chapter 10, verse 5. These 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, and to ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Hmm. Who can help me with that? Remind. I got Mark pulled earlier in Zechariah 12 and 7 says that Judah shall be praised first. Right. Yeah, but, um, so why did he tell him not to go there? Because he had to go first. He didn't be the king. Right. Christ told him, y'all, y'all wait. Everything must be done decently and in order. Give me that in Zechariah 12 so we can hear the prophecy. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 7. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. That's why he said, told him, don't go to the Gentiles, meaning the scattered Israelites, and don't deal with Ephraim either in Samaria. He said, but go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. He was referring to the kingdom of Judah. Okay, that's what he was referring to. Deal with them first. Because that's the prophecy in Zechariah. Read again. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first, that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. Because the prophecy is if they can't, if the other tribes come in first, they will magnify themselves against Judah. That's why you got some of these camps led by Asher and Simeon. Start saying, oh, don't deal with no color in the Bible. Right. Yeah, don't even teach it. Don't teach Christ is black. That's what will happen. And pull all the images down from their website. No images on our website. 
Exactly. Okay? Because of that hatred, that envy. And start a campaign bashing the Christians. Because of what, right here. That's why the Most High said, I'm not going to let them get razor first. Because they're going to do the wrong things. Exactly. Okay, we're we back in John 4. John chapter 4, verse... 24. 24. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. What does that mean? <laughs> they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Zekai. Yeah, spirit and truth. That's all about. Yeah, the truth is the law. All right, so you gotta keep the law. How do you how do you prove that? All right, that's Psalms 119, 142. Write that down. Psalms 119, verse 142 proves. That's the truth of the law, go ahead. And the spirit is John 663, meaning all the words of Christ, which becomes a part of the book, so that's the entire Bible. Very good, very good, all praises. We know? God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Come on. The woman said unto him, I know that the Messiah is coming. I know that Messiah cometh. That's why I said, Abiel, that they had some understanding. He from they had they were waiting for the Messiah. They knew a little bit of the scriptures. He said, I, she said, I know Messiah is coming. Okay? The woman said unto him, I know that Messiah is coming, which is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speaketh unto thee am he. See, he revealed himself to her. He said, I'm the Messiah. He revealed himself. So this should let you know that this woman is what? Israel. Israel. Go ahead. And upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet no man said, What seekest thou? Or why talkest thou with her? Why did they marvel? I marvel. Why did they marvel? Because he just previously told them that they were not to speak to the northern kingdom, not to deal with them at all. And what else? And not to even go into their cities. What else? The woman said it early in the chapter. Zephaniah. He said salvation is of the Jews. Nope. I'm on. Leon. Uh, for the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. The Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. She said that in verse, verse 9. Verse 9. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou being a Jew askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. That's why they marvel. So what Christ talking to her for? What's going on? Come on. What verse? Uh, verse 26. Jesus said unto her, I that speaketh unto thee am he. Come on. And upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet no man said, What seekest thou? Or why talkest thou with her? The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and said to the men, Come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Uh oh. Go ahead. Then they went out of the city and came unto him. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed to him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Okay. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Has any man brought him up to eat? See, they were simple. They thinking about literal meat. Christ's meat, he's talking about the understanding of scriptures. What he has to do and fulfill. Go ahead. Jesus said unto them, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me. That's his meat. Go ahead. And to finish his work. Say not ye there. Say not ye. There are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And so Christ was letting know, what was his harvest really talking about? Uh, Elior? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, the harvest is, is his people. Right, that's what he's really talking about. Israel coming together. Go ahead. And he that reapeth receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. Come on. And herein is that saying true, one soweth and another reapeth. I sent you to reap, that whereon ye bestow no labor. Another man labor. Other man. Other men labored, and ye are entered into their labor. Right. Just like us today, 
We're entering into the labors of the men that was before us being out on the streets, the highways and the byways laboring. This is not the first group of Israel raising up. We're entering into other men's labors, right? And many of the Samaritans of the city believed on him. For the saying of the woman which testified, he told me all that ever I did. So when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them, and he abode there two days. Notice he stayed there how long? Two days. This is letting you know again that these people are what? Israelites. These are Israelites. He stayed there two days teaching them. Okay? So now, from there, let's go to John chapter 8. Watch this. I want to show you the hatred that Israel, I mean that Judah, had for Ephraim and them. John 8, 46 to 49. Listen good to what the Pharisees say to Christ. John chapter 8, verse 46. This is Christ speaking right here. Which of you convinces me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God, hear of God's word. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan, and hast the devil. You see that? <laughs> That's what Israel, Judah, and them thought of Ephraim and them. The damn devil. That was an insult right. to Christ. <laughs> How about we call you a Samaritan and you a devil? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's what was going on. From there, let's go to uh, Luke 10 and 29. Luke chapter 10, verse 29. Pay close attention. Now, what we're about to read here is going to go in, coincide with Isaiah 11 and 13 that Ezekiel had quoted earlier. Watch this. Luke chapter 10, verse 29. But he willing to justify himself said unto Jesus, and who is my neighbor? The subject is, who is my neighbor? I want you to see how Christ cuts the Pharisees enough. Watch this. Remember how they thought about the, uh, the uh, what are the Samaritans? They were the devil, right? Watch how Christ cuts them. Go ahead. And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. See that? There was a certain priest who saw the man and passed on the other side. Go ahead. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. Now comes a Levite. He looks and he passed on the other side too. But a certain Samaritan, a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And went to him and bound up his wound, pouring in oil and wine and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which thou of these... Which now? Which now of these three thinkest thou? Was a neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him, then said Jesus unto him, Go and do thou likewise. Do y'all see the cut? Y'all don't see the cut. What is the cut? What is the cut? Because he said that the priests had passed by the man, and these brothers were, were priests of, of Israel. So he said they passed by, but the man you call the devil, that Samaritan, he stopped and put that man, housed him up in the head, and you know, show him that mercy and that grace. And then notice he said, Go and do you likewise. Go <laughs> follow the example of the Samaritans who you hate. You see the cut there? Now the neighbor. Give me that in Leviticus 19 about the neighbor. Because that was the question, who is my neighbor? Just like today, when you ask a black man who's his neighbor, who does he point to? The white man. Let's see what the Bible says. Because some of y'all might read that parable we just read and it's simple. And think anybody is your neighbor. Leviticus 19 verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Notice it's talking about your neighbor. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. He's explaining your neighbor. Your neighbor is who? The children of thy people. The children of your people. Blacks and Latinos can't understand that today. That's confusion. What? What? 
Because you want your neighbor to be the Chinese, the African, the white man, the Arab, but that's not your neighbor. Read it again from the top. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. See that? So your neighbor is the children of your people. That's something you got to meditate on over and over and not having hatred one towards another. From there, let's go to Luke 17. Luke 17, verse 11. I want y'all to see this too. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into, into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers. Which ten men all. that were lepers. Who can tell me about leprosy? Ten men that were lepers. Who can tell me about leprosy? Mm, we need some new hands. Oh. Here's a new hand. You. Yeah, you. I, tell me about leprosy. I, What's his name? Gideon. Gideon. Tell me about leprosy. Leprosy is when um, you turn all white, like Miriam did um, for insulting um, Moses. Okay, what else? Anything else? Um, different kinds. I'm trying to see who has the thought. And there's pain and, and dirty leprosy, but I don't have to preset for, it for that. It's Leviticus. 13. 13, very good. Let's get one. Let's get Leviticus 13. Is it 40 I want? Yeah. I want that yellow hair leprosy. Y'all yeah. yeah. don't get mad. I know a lot of sisters like to dye their hair. Mm. But we must read the law. Because <laughs> y'all want to look like Mary J. Blige. What's that other one that dyes Beyonce? Beyonce. Beyonce. Rihanna. All of them. Rihanna. They all look. I like that. Rihanna. Blondes have more. Who knows what does the French word blonde mean? Oh. Yellow. It means yellow. So now let's see what the Bible says. Now, y'all can go home and tell your mama this verse. Because <laughs> some of your mama got blind. <laughs> Leviticus chapter 13, verse 30. Is it 30? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Then the priest shall see the plague, and behold, if it be in thy sight deeper than the skin, and there be in it a yellow, thin hair. Yellow, thin hair. Then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. Unclean, because yellow hair is not according to God. It's unclean hair. So sisters, oh my sisters, I know you love, you thought, you really got deceived by the white man. Who said blondes have more fun? <laughs> so you go around and dye your hair. The Bible says that's unclean. That's not for us to emulate. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that the blondes have leprosy. <laughs> <laughs> And you jack it up their hair and they still keep that blonde in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's falling off piece by piece and they just coloring it, coloring it, coloring it. <laughs> <laughs> they just got nappy blonde hair on top of their head. Oh man. From there, let's go to Genesis 49. Let's go to Genesis 49. I need y'all to pay close attention. Now, like I said, we're going to talk about the Puerto Ricans today. Some of y'all might have got your Baha'is whooped by some of the Puerto Ricans. You might have got robbed. That's right. <laughs> but you got to let that go. Let it go, brothers. Let it go. Take a deep breath. Oops. Uh, oops. <laughs> I, know, I know it's hard to do that. But you got to think about Caesar. You got to think of Nathaniel looking at me. You know where I'm going. <laughs> If you can forget about what the white man did to you and your people, you can definitely forget about a Negro mob. That's right. Because <laughs> a white man has destroyed your history, destroyed your people, destroyed your mind, everything. Mm -hmm. To the point where he has whipped you into loving him. And, and like Deacon Yawasak just said, hate requires energy. It's a thought process. You got to build it up, you got to keep it up, you got to feed it. Like it says in Ecclesiasticus, I forgot. Uh, you got to literally feed it. Okay? When you take on the spirit of Christ, you learn to let things go. If you don't have the spirit of Christ, you just got to keep reminding yourself. What that nigga did to me again? Oh, yeah, 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 now I remember. You got to feed it. You got to conjure it up. Okay. And let's not forget about you Dominicans. 
You mentioned Puerto Rican cinema, a lot of them hit the roof. That's right. It's an insult. Oh, they think they're better than us. I heard it all my life. I'm like, what the hell is wrong with you? Just getting mad. Just because America allowed Ephraim to be a Commonwealth. Commonwealth, and they don't gotta get a passport or whatever. Y'all get mad. Don't get mad, get glad. Let's be glad for our people. Okay, some of you other ones from Jamaica. Some of y'all from Jamaica never ain't seen a Puerto Rican until you got here. What is a Puerto Rican? <laughs> Sit down and do some research. Read about history. Read about the people. I'm like, brother asked me, what is a Puerto Rican? I have never seen one. Just brother, walk through the Bronx. What the hell is wrong with you? Pick up a book. Hey, you know what's sad about what the elders say? <laughs> we're laughing and we're joking, but what's sad, what is sad is that it had to be in the law not to hate thy brother in thy heart. Because it comes natural. For some of y'all, it comes natural. Y'all can flip it on like a switch. Y'all ain't never met him. Y'all ain't never seen him. And as soon as you see him, you hate him. Yeah. It comes natural for some of you. And that's how you know the spirit of Christ is not in you. Because you should be battling. You should be questioning yourself. Yo, why do I have issues with this person? He's never, he or she has never done anything to me. Exactly. It's me, the devil is inside of me. That's right. And let's not forget the black woman. Growing up in school, there's a black woman with no hair. <laughs> and she is a Puerto Rican woman, and all the boys are looking at her. Who she look good? They want to fight her. I've seen that all my life. Oh, God. It's still going on. It's still going on. Uh. <laughs> I got a story where he just reminded me. One time my little sister, she know what the making girl to grow out their hair. She went, nah, I'm good. she went to school and there was a big black girl that, um, that sat behind her and she lit her hair on fire. Oh man, you see that? That's that hatred right there. And she got home, she was like, yeah, let me be out of hair. <laughs> When I saw the girl, I was like, yeah, her hair was like this big. You see that? Big. That's that hatred. That is that hatred. She saw, she saw that hair, she hey. said, damn, it's true. They that's, a, have hair. that's a <laughs> sick mind yeah. for what y'all stop just said. You see the hair before you see the person. Right. You're not even looking at the individual. You're just looking at her hair. Exactly. <laughs> Hi, I'm over here. Okay, she ain't even looking in your face. She's behind you, thinking about what can I put in her hair. Exactly. How can I start a fight with her so I can damage her hair? Exactly. Okay? That's a sick mind. It is. So we gotta get over the little, the little hatreds that's within our people. We've got only the Bible can cure us. So let's go to Genesis 49. Because you got some Israelites that say no to Puerto Ricans and the Dominicans, they're not Israelites. We don't accept them. We don't care. God don't care what you accept. We're going to teach the Bible as it is written and that's it. Get over it. <laughs> Genesis 49, read verse 1 and 2, then we're going to jump to 22. Genesis 49, verse 1. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourself together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourself together and hear ye sons of Jacob and hearken unto Israel your father. Now before you can even deal with Genesis 49, there's one chapter that you must understand first. Who can tell me what it is? We touched on it earlier today. We didn't read the fullness of it. Ramaya. Second thirteen. Exactly. Uh, give me that second out thirteen. Now what's up? Get this right here, get this signed. Because there's a dumb thought, and I want you to hold that up. It's heavy. Now I want you to look at all the tribes here. All right. So now Asaph is going to read Second Ezra 13. Start at verse 40, please. Those are the ten tribes. Those are the ten tribes. Now, at this time that he's reading, the tribe of Dan was included on this. So you got Ephraim, Manasseh, Simeon, Zebulon, Gad, Reuben, Asher, Issachar, Naphtali, and it was Dan. We did again. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoner out of their own land. Now remember what we read in Ezekiel 37. Who can remember? Take one stick for Judah and his companions, and another stick take for Ephraim and his companions. If you don't understand that, you are not going to understand the 12 tribe breakdown. You got to understand that the two kingdoms were split. 
split into two. Now you gotta ask yourself, what happened to the 10 tribes? Second Ezra 13 and 40 is gonna explain it, come on. Those are the 10 tribes which were carried away prisoner out of their own land in the time of Hosea the king. Then we read that in 1 Kings 12? We read that, okay? Whom Shalmanassar. Whom Shalmanassar, remember I told you, I remember that name. Because that name which is written in Kings is the same name recorded here in the Apocrypha. Go ahead. Whom Shalmanassar, the king of Assyria, led away captive. And he carried them over the waters. And he carried them over the waters. And so came they into another land. What was the another land that they went to? Who remembers? Who remembers uh, Ezekiel? Uh, the land that they went to was uh, Assyria. Right, it was Assyria. That's where they were made slaves at. The ten tribes made slaves in Assyria. Read. And he carried them over the waters, and so came they into another land. But they took this counsel among themselves. But they, meaning the ten tribes, took this counsel among themselves. Go ahead. That they would leave the multitude of the heathen. How were they able to take that counsel and leave the multitude of the heathen? Uh, Barnabas. Where's the mic? How were they, if they were in slavery, Barnabas, how were they able to take counsel and say, let's leave the heathen? King Cyrus gave them liberty. Right, King Cyrus gave them freedom. In Ezra chapter one, we write that down. Ezra, E-Z-R-A chapter one. King Cyrus gave the Israelites freedom from slavery in chapter one. You got to know that history. Start again from, and they took this counsel. But they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into further country where never mankind dwelt. Now that's the part you want to highlight. Where never mankind dwelt. So the part of land where they went to, it says nobody ever dwelt there before. So it's not Africa, it's not Russia, it's not Spain, it's not Turkey, it's not Zimbabwe. It's a place where never mankind dwelt. A further country. A further country. Further country where never mankind dwelt. Uh, does it look, can you pull that up for me? A world map. Because Negroes hate geography, we just hate, so we get stuck on stupid, and we just can criticize everything. Okay, you see that area right there, where you got Syria and Turkey, right? And right above the top, well that whole area was a Syria right there, that whole area. Okay, so ASAP, read that again. But they took the this council among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt, that they might keep their statues which they, they might there. that they might they keep their statues which they never kept in their own land. Come on. And they entered into the Euphrates. Show me the Euphrates to the right. Yes, right there. The Euphrates is that dark line right there. They entered into the Euphrates, and what happened? And they entered into the Euphrates by the narrow passages. By the narrow passages, and now from the Euphrates, it leads you down into the Persian Gulf. I want you to see the water out. Follow it up. Go around. This is the route they went down into the Indian Ocean. Come on, Asa. And they entered into the Euphrates by the narrow passages of the river. But the Most High then showed signs for them, and held still the floods till they were passed over. But through the country there was a great way to go. So there was a great way to go through, through the Euphrates, to the Persian Gulf, into the Indian Ocean. It was a great way to go, go ahead. Namely of a year and a half. So the God is telling us it took a year and a half. So anybody that does not, but let's read on. For through the country there was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half. And the same region is called Arsa. Right. So that part over there is where never mankind dwelt. See that part where it says Brazil. All, that, all that, this entire continent. All of this. Never mankind dwelt. Western Hemisphere. Right, the Western Hemisphere. For through that country there was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half. And the same region is called Arsa. So it, this region is called Arsa. Right. All of this was made called Arsa. This whole region over here. Y'all heard that? This whole region was called Arsmith. So now, hold back, hold back up the ten tri the twelve tribes. So now, through a process of elimination, God tells you the ten tribes came over here first, which was Ephraim and his companions. So that automatically takes out those top three, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. So just forget about them for this lesson. 
Uh, so if somebody says you don't know who the tribes are, number one, when you start here, that lets you know that Ephraim is here, Manasseh, Simeon, Zebulon, Gad, Reuben, Asher, Issachar, Naphtali, and Dan that came with them. Okay, because Judah, Benjamin, and Levi stayed behind. Everybody understand that? Yes. yes. Yeah. You got people that's teaching that they don't know where the tribes are, who the tribes are, but yet Christopher Columbus knew. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was going to prove that further. You go to JewishEncyclopedia.com, the definition of Azalea. Explains exactly. Oh, you got that, Bezalel? All right. Here you go right there. The name of the land beyond the great river, far away from the habitation of man, in which the ten tribes of Israel will dwell, observing the laws of Moses until the time of the restoration. According to that right second Ezra uh, 1345, Columbus identified. America with this land. Yeah. You see that? So the so-called Jews know. Yeah. But they'll tell you, we don't know, we don't know. They're lying in your face. How in the world could Christopher Columbus identify? What that said is there's a lot of information in it. Columbus identified America with Osiris. How did he do that? By reading the Bible. By understanding where the tribes are. Because once he followed where the tribes went, and he said that they went up when Osirith, he's calling Osirith America. So what does that tell you about your enemies? Mm -hmm. They know who you are. Right. Straight up. Right. I hope y'all understand that. All right, so when these Israelites say nobody knows who the tribes are, the way they, that's a lie. That's a lie. Okay, you know, you know the 10 tribes came over here now. Out of those 10 tribes, let's identify Ephraim and Manasseh. Ephraim and Manasseh are called Joseph in Genesis 49. Verse 1 and 2, please. Genesis chapter 49, verse 1. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together and carry ye sons of Jacob and hearken unto Israel your father. So he's saying these things will happen unto you in the last days. That's the key, the last days. Jump over to verse 22, please. Verse 22. Joseph is a fruitful bow. Joseph is a fruitful bow. Okay, because that's Ephraim means what? Fruitful. fruitful. Go ahead. Even a fruitful bow by the well. Meaning they would be on an island. Letting you know the children of Joseph would be near a well, meaning on an island. Go ahead. Whose branches run over the wall. Whose branches run over the wall. Give me that thing, Bezalel, about the history of Puerto Rico. In Puerto Rico, they built something called El Moro. 1539, concerned about potential threats from European enemies and recognizing the strategic importance of Puerto Rico, Spain began to construct, Spain began constructing massive defenses around San Juan. That was the first name of Pion. The construction of San Felipe del Moro Castle began. So there was a huge wall that Spain built to keep out the other Europeans. The fort featured 18 foot thick walls. San Cristobal, San Geronimo forts, also garrison troops were built with the financial subsidy from the Mexican mines. They were robbed from Mexican mines. Next, the Spanish constructed a wall, parts of which still survive around the entire city. 1539. Okay, great. So now back to ASAP. Get to the point, by the, the bottom of verse 22. Verse 22, Joseph is a fruitful bow, even a fruitful bow by a well, whose branches run over the wall. Whose branches run over the wall. Now the wall was constructed to keep out other European um, forces, okay? Spain wanted to keep the Tainos for themselves, but an odd thing happened. The, door, the Puerto Rican women started to deal with the men of the other nations. Real quick. Um, who got a precept in their Bible next to the door, next to branches? Yeah. 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 It says daughters. Right. For branches, it translates to daughters. Whose daughters run over the wall, meaning they dealt with the other men of the other nations. Give me that in Hosea, please. Hosea 7, verse 8. Ephraim, he had mixed himself among the people. That's what I wanted. When the daughters of Ephraim went over the wall, that's what it meant. They mixed themselves amongst the people. Read again. Ephraim, he had mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cape, not turn. Ephraim is a cape, not turn. That's why some Puerto Ricans are very light-skinned. Some can almost pass for white, Caucasian. Whereas others are very dark-skinned, who look like they're Judah. Read it again. 
Abram yet mixed himself among the people. That's what Genesis is talking about. Where it says whose branches went over the wall, meaning whose daughters went over the wall and dealt with the Europeans. Read again. Ephraim, he hath mixed himself. Ephraim, among, he hath mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake, not turn. Ephraim is a cake, not turn. If you don't turn a cake, one side is very light, the other side is very dark. Okay? Because you get some, you know why this is important? You get some moron Israelites that say, oh no, their complexion is wrong. They supposed to be dark skinned like because Joseph passed for an Egyptian. All the Puerto Ricans should be, all the Ephraim should look like that. That ain't what this says. That is not what God says here in a prophecy. Read it again. Ephraim, he hath mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake, not turn. So we understand when we meet Ephraim, they're going to come with those different looks. Right? Strangers have devoured his strength. Which were the Europeans, devoured their strength. And no, they not. They don't understand that the Europeans took their wealth, their diamonds, their minerals, natural resources, destroyed their nationality. Right? Their gray hairs are <coughs> here and there upon him. Meaning, no, read not. again. Read it slow so we can understand. Strangers have devoured his strength, and he knoweth did not. Yea, gray hairs are here and there. Meaning, they grow old. Puerto Ricans grow old and don't realize what happened to them. Read the whole verse again. Strangers have devoured his strength, and he knoweth it not. Yet gray hairs are here and there upon him, yet he knoweth not. Yet he knoweth not. So now your next question might be, what if the daughters of Ephraim dealt with the Europeans? Doesn't that mean that the kids are Edomites? What's the answer? Remind the answer is no, because according to Hosea 9, 14, those kids die. Let's go to Hosea 9, 13 again. And we, verse 14 is the point. Ephraim, as I saw Tyrus, is a plant, is planted in a pleasant place. But Ephraim shall bring forth his children to the murderer. Give them, O Lord. Wait a minute, read that again. Ephraim, as I saw Tyrus, is planted in a pleasant place. But Ephraim shall bring forth his children to the murder. The Puerto Ricans brought their children to the murderers. The murderers was the white man. They willingly brought their children to them after a while. Like today. Go ahead. But Ephraim shall bring forth his children to the murder. Give them, O Lord, what wilt thou give? Go ahead. Give them a miscarrying womb and dry breath. So that's what happened to those kids. Give them a miscarrying womb and dry breast. Do y'all understand what he's saying? Kill those children. So you don't gotta worry about, oh, but they look like Edomites. The prophecy says the majority of them kids was dead when they went out and did that thing. The ones you see results of these is real Ephraim. No matter how light or how dark, that's Ephraim. Praise God for that. And that's right, you better praise, praise God, God for that. Praise God that the Edomite children died. That's beautiful. That's what he's saying. So you don't gotta bug out and be confused. I'm confounded. Now from there, go to uh, Hosea 13, 16. Watch this, Hosea 13, 16. Hosea 13, verse 16. Samaria shall become desolate. Samaria shall become desolate, watch this. But she hath rebelled against her God. Meaning Ephraim has rebelled against her God. We shall fall by the sword. Ephraim shall fall by the sword. Their infants shall be dashed in pieces. Their infants shall be... Bezalel, can you give me the picture? Here's the prophecy. Read that again. Samaria shall become desolate, for she hath rebelled against her God. They shall fall by the sword. Their infants shall be dashed in pieces. Their infants shall be dashed. This is what the murderers, the white man, did to the children of the Puerto Ricans. They dashed their children against the stone. Now this was drawn by a, a friar, a priest, an Edomite uh, friar named uh, De La Casas. Eyewitness account. Here, it was an eyewitness account of what they did to the Indians. Their infants shall be dashed in pieces, and their women with child shall be ripped up. And their women with child shall be ripped up. Who can tell me the history behind that? They show you how once the child was ripped out of the belly of the Puerto Rican women, the Tainos, they would feed the baby to their dogs. That's what they did, and that's what the Bible is talking about here, and their women with child shall be ripped up. Okay? So we know who Ephraim is. So ain't nobody gonna confound us 
or confuse us and start looking at Philistines as, as Ephraim. Uh, Don't we get these dumb emails? No, Africans is Ephraim. No, Africans is not Ephraim. Okay? Second Ezra said they came on this side of the world. So we looking here. We ain't looking over yonder. It's one where he's holding, one woman's hung up by her neck and another one got a dog. So what we're giving y'all is the truth. And you gotta take it, accept it, and believe it. So we got the truth. Go back to Hebrews 7. We're almost done. Hebrews 7 and 8 again. There's something I wanted to show y'all. Hosea 7. Hosea 7. 8 again. Start right there. Hosea 7, verse 8. Come on. Ephraim, he hath mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake, not turned. Come on. Strangers have devoured his strength, and he knoweth it not. The gray hairs are here and there upon him, yet he knoweth not. Come on. And the pride of Israel testified to his face. The pride of Israel testified to Ephraim's face. Go ahead. And they do not return to the Lord. Yeah, that's why a lot of the bulk of them ain't returning until the 11th hour. The bulk of them, you busting your butt trying to bring them in. God says, mm -mm. <laughs> Go ahead. And they do not return to the Lord their God, nor seek him for all this. Watch this. Ephraim also is like a silly dove without heart. Ephraim is like a silly dove, meaning they dumb as hell. <laughs> and they, and without heart, meaning they, a lot. Cowards, cow, I gotta tell y'all straight. Cowards, the sun, the sun on my head. I can't stay out here. You know what's gonna happen to me? Yeah. I'm gonna blame you, I'm gonna sue you with my faith. <laughs> It says without heart. Without heart. Now that ain't all Ephraim in general, but a large portion of them. Watch that. That tribe. Yeah, what we do know. Simeon. Yeah, we talk about Ephraim. It's talking about Simeon. Hosea 4:17. Hosea 4:17. Hosea 4. Verse 17. That's what God says. Ephraim is joined to idols. Ephraim is joined to idols. Many a Puerto Rican and their mama got yeah. idols of Caesar, Bourget, some got them on their headlights. They got them etched in their drawers. <laughs> Tattoos all over of Caesar, Bourget. What the hell is this? Are y'all crazy? That's why earlier it said, strangers have devoured their strength. They knoweth it not. Yea, gray hairs are here and there. Ephraim does not know. They don't consider. And you know, you know when I first saw that thing, I, I gotta tell you, when I first saw the Caesar Bogier headlights, <laughs> I mean, the very first time I saw it, it drove me nuts. I said, what the hell is wrong with these people? <laughs> you put a sticker on the on the headlights of the car, you could barely, you go block the lights. So you're talking about a sticker, but I saw was etched in the glass of the headlight. Etched in. But they got the sticker that you put on it now, right? There's, a, there's some kind of film that you put on it so when you turn the lights on, it sees the light up. <laughs> this is some insane madness. And, mm -hmm. and idols all off the dashboard. You can't even see. Idols all on the dashboard. They got idols with, what's the guy that crippled, what's his name? Lazarus. Lazarus with the bobblehead. Yep. <laughs> what the hell is this? <laughs> there was a documentary about gangs. And they were saying that they didn't start monitoring the tattoos until they started dealing with the Northern Kingdom. Right. Because they put them on their eyelids, their lips, everywhere. Right. Their head, they shaved their off, they put them on their head. And it's all religious stuff yep. that have no merit, nothing to do with the scriptures. They'll put it on, but they keep in commandment one. Exactly. So read that again, verse 17. Ephraim is joined to idols. Let him alone. So we know who Ephraim is. We know that's them Puerto Ricans. We know that's them. We ain't confused no more. We know y'all. We see you. <laughs> so let's give all praise to the Most High. That's that.